Well, kia ora and welcome. It's Ngaroa Wakia and the action once again from Rugby League Park, the home of the Ngaroa Wakia Panthers, as the Bay of Plenty line up against Waikato. And this is something of a local derby, but in a way, these two teams haven't met for such a long time. It's the Manaways. Throw one up, Willie Poaching. We've got them going on in the commentary position. And in the last game, too, commenting about toffee apples, which is something from yesteryear. Willie Poaching in for this one today. And uh, these two teams, well, obviously, they combined in the Waikor Bay uh, franchise of yesteryear. But a chance to go head to head here. Uh, it should be an enthralling game, too. They might not be at the top of the table, these two squads, but uh, they'll be well mixed as we have a look. Let's have a look at uh, some of the results. Gorgeous day here in Ngāroa Wahia today. Uh, a little bit overcast, of course. The Hakarimata uh, uh, Rangers in the background there. A couple of uh, uh, rolls of the highlights, too. Welcome, Willie Poaching. Good to be calling footy alongside you once again here. Hoa no, no, me for me. Thank you for having us. It's awesome being here. Love the last couple of weeks of calling the New Zealand Rugby League Premiership, and this was Waikato last week. And the moments that they really troubled the Countess Monaco Stingrays, this was their try just before half time. And they showed some dangerous moments in the game. They've had a tough couple of weeks coming up against the Vulcans and the Stingrays, the two big dogs in the competition. Bay of Plenty, they've got some talent and some ability themselves. As we see this one against Akarana last weekend. We've got some determination and some athletes. And this would be a cracker this afternoon. As you said, could, should be a local derby. But they haven't played for a long time. It's lovely to see two traditional sides in our provinces coming together and facing each other today. Well, of course, uh, looking at the results so far, Counties Monaco, Stingrays and uh, the Vulcans, uh, a couple of games still to go there. Uh, the Canterbury Bulls successful in our previous game from this venue, 26 points to eight winners over the Waikato, uh, and still to come, Stingrays, Vulcans, Walkers, and the Falcons. So this is the men's premiership, and it's the Auckland Vulcans who sit atop that premiership Five from five, they've been very impressive. Waikato, as you can see, yet to win. The Bay of Plenty did get a victory over the Otago Whalers. Yeah, they were very, very good in the, in the game that was seesawing, and the Otago Whalers had an opportunity at the end of the game to possibly take the win away from the Bay of Plenty side. But some smarts, some talent, some great football from their side got them home. Troy Brown, Rewiti Brown, Dylan Clark. Some of the names to look out for tonight. And, of course, Blake Ashford. He's the danger man. So much goes through him. Well, it's good to see Blake out there as well. He's a neat guy, Blake. And, of course, he's settled into NZ. I uh, did some work with him not so very long ago, too. He can rattle off a bit of mouldy as well now, oh, too. Oh, awesome. Blakey boy. So awesome. uh, good to have him uh, uh, represented. Waikato there. Haile Morahi is the uh, uh, coach of the squad. Flood's got plenty of experience, but... Uh, the number seven, Rehana Ivan. Uh, that's Bruce Rehana, this young fellow. He's just had a couple of uh, seasons playing rugby league, but loves it. And uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing how they go. Rangi is certainly one to keep an eye out for. Mahina Rangi at the back. That's his brother as well, Kina Rangi, uh, playing in the forwards too uh, in jersey number 14, Kina. Uh, here's the uh, Bay of Plenty lineup. Co captains, Brown in jersey and number nine. Of course, Hohepa at the back today. Uh, replacements, Little Hartley, Letonga, Taitoko, and Senior. And their coach, who's also had a run around too in the club comp. I think he played for Tani Fano back, back in the day. Jeremy uh, Siulepa. Good to have you with us here from the Panthers as these two proud regions come on out and uh, pick up of their last head out for 2024 and uh, of course proud moments too it's one thing to play top side club footy but uh, to wear the uh, the regional or provincial strip uh, is always uh, an honor uh, i suppose you would have made some Auckland teams when you were playing as a young fella too uh, yeah uh, fortunately Willie. yeah um, yeah it's an honor to represent at whatever level and for the region for which you live or you represent you you're representing more than just yourself and those that have gone before you and worn the jersey and 
the legacy that they left, you're trying to enhance that legacy by by putting it on yourself and leaving some sort of positive mark. So that's the opportunity that these guys have today when they put when they both put on their jerseys, whether that be both Plenty or Waikato. And we're all, always uh, talking too about the opportunity to inspire the next generation of players as you get older. There's a lot to contribute. We're underway here. It's Sky Sport. It's the Men's Championship Rugby League. And a wonderful take at the back, going backwards by the co-captain, Connor Horhepper. He comes in with some good raps as well. Of course, Alataki from Totong are the winners of the Bay of Plenty competition, which has teams running out of, uh, out of Rotorua, Pikiao, um, Taupo, uh, Magakino as well from the Bay. So it's great to have you with us here today. You can see in the background there, Blake Ashford. Played uh, a lot of footy for the Warriors. He's a NZRL development officer based in Papamoa now, Blake. But uh, he certainly uh, loves the region and uh, loves being involved with rugby league in whatever capacity. I guess you could say the same with that uh, to our co-commentator here, Willie Po Ching. Yeah, definitely. Broadcaster now, though, <laughs> yeah. on, on Pacifica Media and uh, sharing the love for our Pacifica peoples as well on a day-to-day -day basis, bro. Yeah, championing all the people that do some great work from our Pacifica and Māori community, whether that be the athletics, the administrators, or the great coaches, and even some of the volunteers that do some wonderful groundbreaking work for our athletes to really make their mark. So Waikato, in possession of the football here is Jerome Flood takes the ball forward. He's plenty experienced uh, and been in this representative squad for some years now. 21 on the carry is Billy Gudgeon. Uh, he too is tall, rangy, prop forward. He gets to his feet. They'll be pleased, or pleased to be playing it's such a familiar ground for many of these guys who do their club footy, uh, playing at Ngāruma Wahia. Of course, Tūranga Waiwai, the club not too far away. And here's Blake Ashford with his first touch of the football. Kono Papita Penegestro is in the midst. That's Luki Raihe, uh, who's making the tackle. And so it's about plenty with the football here. Yeah, they'll be pleased we've got a win over the Otago Whalers. Quick play of the ball out of dummy half. In fact, it was uh, the mouse trap. You don't see it all that often. No, but but the mouse is... seen it there. Yeah, pulled it straight out early in the game. Uh, to the right hand side, back row. Hohepa keeps it alive. How's the bounce there? Play on. Yes, it's still a goer. Referee says, You can go. Lovely little offload down the right to Junior Tire. Then the ball goes down. Well, for a moment there, I thought the Lakers were going to get away to a. A shining start. One of the Waikato players down at back play too takes some um, uh, attention. Uh, when I was calling the last game, I mentioned to Crystal Rota, if she's ever heard the term Zambuck. Zambuck? Yeah? No. Okay, good. Oh, well, I, oh, it must be 100 <laughs> years old then. These are, the, these are the guys who used to come out in their black suits and, um, and tend to injured players. I know the St. John's Hospital boys that yeah, used yeah. to come out. Uh, look, you'd have to you'd have to be a crusty old cat with grey uh, hair if you remember the term. Um, then. But then again, we used to get petrol from the Bowser and listen to the wireless, <laughs> so you know you know where I'm coming from, mate. Horse and cart? Sorry, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Well, maybe that's a, getting a little over the top there, Mr. Poaching. Okay, what's the footy here? 21, Gudgeon across the top. On him is Rewati Brown. I'm assuming that's his bro beside him. Troy Brown, eight and nine, respectively. Nicely taken at the back by Timadi. And the defensive work by Ken Arangi is solid. Bay of Plenty with the football, 15 out from their own line. Right in front of the post. Getting away at a pretty frantic pace here. But one thing's for, sure, uh, for certain, Willie, it's a great shop front. Uh, to have video of match play, uh, I'm not sure how you got hold of your first professional contract offshore, but you know to have a show reel to send to somebody is important. For sure, and scouts around the world can get their hands on this somehow, whether they get sent the footage or they're watching it right now. There's an opportunity for every time these guys step out, as you say, to put themselves in that front window and tell scouts that they're they're up for it and they have the ability to take the next step whatever direction that is 
but just getting into a system is the first one and sometimes that's all some of these young fellas need and that's what the, some of these guys who are still of an age to, to be able to do that that's what they'll be aspiring to do today yeah i spoke um uh, midweek about Wadi hargraves and what a hit he's going to be up in in the hull you know they are watching the southern hemisphere rugby league and this is representative football too so as we stay with the action we might talk about uh jwh as well because he's been such a phenomenon in the nrl i'm thinking that the guys up in uh, northern england will absolutely fall in love with his style of play as we see again waikato with the football here's Mahina rangi he comes with big raps this bloke he'll play the ball five out from the try line that's his brother who delivers it up the grubber kick to the end goal the scoop and pick up and rick sullivan is in he has a second try at it and i thought for a moment that he had done enough the referee says no no it's a double movement rex i thought he got across first time as the uh, uh the captain rangi is questioning the decision so there's the thread the needle here's rex there so he's finished there then he gets up to go again yeah i'm not sure if the defender had any control he may have had a hand on him but i don't think he stopped his momentum i thought he was well within his rights to get up there was no defender at the time to put it down the referee saw it otherwise but great start from the waikato side that's all here but now the lakers have the football as ashford carries rick play the ball yeah jeremy uh Cialepa is really proud of the way his team's going this is a wonderful carry as well look at this run from the big dylan clark so the lakers have it changing direction weaving bobbing spinning and scoring i'm picking that that one got to the line the referee was well positioned but he's saying held up we'll get the luxury of another look at it for a moment i thought that he had done all the work needed vince mortimer uh but not so the referee says no no we'll back it up here the beautiful lead up work from clark the second rower with a powerhouse effort the lakers poised to do well and that is secured with dan holmes going through to score he almost stalled a little bit like the uh, the warriors against melbourne all those years ago but uh, first try on the board for the lakers four nil yeah and unfortunately for the waikato side this has been their issue they go close down one end and then when they're called upon to defend they leak a break a great play it was here from dylan clark one-on-one -on -one. You can see the joy on his face. He gets tackled. They miss out for Mordunga to go over. They get the restart and Tomes, the big front rower, he puts it down to open the scoring for the game. Gets both Lenti's first try. And they go end to end. After after Waikato concede that penalty. And the disappointment not to come over the try, but even bigger disappointment to concede at the other end. Lucas Portugal, uh, it's the man who Tutuko, will take the conversion. Gets good raps from his coach too. Uh, says that Kalis is really good on his feet, really balanced runner. He's liking how he's developed in 2024. This is straightforward from in front of the post. 6-0, scoreline after seven. And the Lakers through Holmes. And as Willie Poaching mentioned, I thought uh, the predecessor with the run at the line had almost done enough. But this time around, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> you don't wait around. Once you're over that line, Willie Poaching, I know you, used to, you were such a prolific try scorer. I never saw you holding up. No, well, it's worth the same here as it is to around down to the post. So just put the ball down straight away. Yeah, get to ground. Just a wrap for Connor Horhipper for just playing deep in the line. It's uh, been evident watching this competition that a lot of the players play very early which is easy for the defense to just move off and defend the play when they go dig into the line a lot of these teams are getting so many rewards as Bo Flinty did then judging with the tackle on Mortimer out of dummy half goes JP Leavey and it'll be Detroit Brown who is looking around here where the next opportunity is they sense a chance down the right here. lovely hands here from the Lakers. Some speed, some wheels here. This time from Putuko, the runner on the inside is beautifully positioned. And Tamana Tamani finishes off what was a very smart effort. 
a team try. Some obvious threats down the right edge and the left defence of the home team were very much tested. Let's have, uh, have a, another look at how it panned out. Everyone had some nice touches, especially this young bloke, Putoko. Putoko was outstanding, and you're talking about the play. It was some slick handling from the Bay of Plenty side. Straight after scoring. And when you've got someone like Blake Ashford out there on your edge, it's easy to use him up and try and give him the ball as much as you can. You can use him as a foil. And that's what they did on that occasion. They threw the ball straight across him, but because of who he is and his standing in the game, he drew defenders in from the outside. That's what opened up the hole for the hole for Putoko. He goes straight through back inside to Tamari. Wonderful try and response already. Just some war and some times for the Waikato side conceding two in a row and within three tackles. And they've conceded plenty of points. So obviously there's some work to be done uh, in the men's division and women's. In and around the Waikato. I'm sure they'll be cognizant of uh, what's needed to develop the game further and to make them more competitive as a uh, provincial force in the national. Look at this young fella here. Way to go, dude. <laughs> you got to like that. I don't know if I've seen that before. <laughs> but it looked pretty neat. Tamana Tamari in for a good try. As we get another look at it, it was well structured. This um, in injection, pulsating run as well from Putoko. And he just uh, drifted the ball back on the inside for Tamari, who had a clean run to the line. But uh, worrying signs early on here for the home team. If you've just joined us, this is live action in the men's championship of 2024. And it's coming to you from the home of the Ngaroa Wahia Panthers, Rugby League Park in Ngaroa Wahia. 12 gone, 12 nil. Look out, Lakers, meaning business here today. Look, for years, people were uh, looking on their maps for Waikor Bay. <laughs> yeah, okay, how far is it to Waikor Bay, they'll be saying. Of course, that was just a a made-up name uh, as a franchise for then was it Bartercard or something going back that long? I think it might have been Bartercard or Waikoua Bay, and which is a combo of Waikato, Bay of Plenty, and coastlines. But uh, it had such an exotic-sounding name, everybody wanted to pitch their tents and uh, take their surfboards out, but could never quite find the joint. And Bay of Plenty, seeing the opportunity to go for a 40-20, just centimetres off getting the distance required and everything going by plenty of way. That's Luki Uraihi. And Jersey 6. He might be JD's Tama. Also from uh, Māori Rugby League. Fantastic tournament last week. Hosted by Rotorua. And next week, this Lakers team is actually playing in that um, uh, fundraising charity match that Sunifa uh, oh, Mawina yes. has organised, just to draw attention to mental health needs. And, you know, I really take my hat off to our, our athletes, especially our guys, uh, who've gone through some troubling times and recognise, hey, you know, you know, you might be famous and everyone knows you, but you can still go through very dark times. Guys like Paul Fatumira have been willing to, to talk about their realities. And um, Sione is uh, hosting a game, I think it's the All-Stars, next week in Rotorua. And they'll be playing against the Lakers. Now, this bounce is important. In fact, it's all over the place. The referee was well sighted there. I don't know if he's got a knock-on from Bay of Plenty first. Yeah, he has. Oh, we've seen this all too often where the ball is allowed to bounce. Not being taken cleanly. Just there, looks, looks like he's got Blake Ashford for the knock-on first. I thought the fullback might have touched it as well, but it did get, it seemed to go back. And then into Blake. Well, Waikato need this. Let's see what they can deliver here. So Waikato, great opportunity. Through the hands of Rehana. Ivan Rehana. Let's see what he can deliver up here. As he sets himself for the play of the ball. Ruggie inside for Flood. Five out for the line, good chance, great chance. 
Kenalangi has a look. Delivers to the right-hand side. Stepping on the inside. Lehan, but he can't get through. The lake is closed down. Just shut the door a couple of metres out from the try line, but still alive. Here they come. Waikato holding, holding, and then the ball. Then the chance to the line. Still coming up short. Still the chance exists here for Waikato. If they can capitalise, Mahinarangi gets hold of the ball, and then spinning is Kennedy towards the line. He backs himself towards the chalk. He's a metre out. Waikato on the hunt here for their first points of the afternoon. But the Lakers survived. The grubber kick to the end goal didn't work the treat that Waikato were hoping for. And the Lakers have the ball as Waikato go into defensive mode. Exciting attack from the Waikato side on the try line. Stringing a couple of strong plays together. And they string some strong D as the ball has been let loose. And looks like the Waikato side have come up. Just pressure from the defence. It's Rehi, Luki Rehi. The six has come up with a couple of strong tackles in a row. And it looks like is in that Taulu, maybe, who scored the try. He's just checking with the touch judges. The referee says, you're OK. Hunky dory. Bells and whistles. It's try time. We'll get another look at it. The big fella was the, the man who scored. Great work from Raihi. The ball's gone to ground and scooped on there by the number four. That's JP Lauvai. Oh, sorry, my apologies. That's Eric Taulu who will be credited with the try. I spoke about their attack. Some excitement about their attack on that occasion. They just couldn't quite break through. Put a nice dribbled kick onto the goal line. Had to go into their defensive mode, and they did it with some strength. And as I said, Luki Rehi, a couple of strong tackles, and it was a one-on-one. -on -one lifting the ball carriers from the Bay of Plenty side. Frustratingly forcing the ball out, going to ground. And Eric Taulu, first to the bounce and scores Waikato's first try. And as you said a little a moment ago, they needed this. They needed to stop the momentum. They need to stop the bleeding and get themselves a try. Great response. Well, these conversions are going to be important at the back end of this one. In normal circumstances, you would expect success from this part of the field with the conversion. We ride home the effort, straight and true, and always deserving too. There's your try scorer, BJ uh, uh, Eric Taolu. As we get uh, another look at the defensive work, yeah, just uh, trying to get get the ball away. Um, a, a sort of panic is very easy to set in when you're going backwards. You feel. Like, I've got to get rid of the ball. You see it time and time again, rather than just, hey, I'll, I'll just go to ground with it. Uh, people try to pop the pass, and it goes a cropper uh, more often than not. Especially when you're anywhere near the, the try line. Uh, you understand maybe 20 metres out, 30 metres out, there may be a temptation if you see there's a support runner. But on that occasion, there was no one behind the ball. It was too close to the try line. Just take your medicine. Well, there's the Lakers back rower. In fact, the co-captain... Uh, the referee was there. A lift. It didn't. It didn't end up dangerous, but it could have. And so, um, referees are charged with getting onto that one real quick. Or pronto. As the kick over towards touch. And, uh, some good free advertising for the local superette. But you can't remember its name, can you? Mills. Oh, did you get it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Willie Poaching, eh? Remember anywhere that sells ice creams? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Waikato just come up with an error. Uh, get the penalty. First tackle. Error in the play, the ball. Well, that's... Uh, and again, you know, it needs to be drilled in, doesn't it? Um, the set after scoring is the vital set. 100%. And even on that occasion, that little play there where we, we talk about speeding up the game and wanting to get a quick play of the ball. But the emphasis also has to be on getting up and playing the ball cleanly and coming up and controlling the ball. Yeah, it sounds simple, but getting to the back end of the set and getting a kick away under pressure cooker circumstances is what secures wins. As we see the Lakers with the football here. Dummy half work for Tetevano, familiar name. No doubt out of Tokoroa. 
Zane Tilavana, Joey Manu, uh, names proudly from the timber town of Aotearoa. The Central North Island short ball here onto Blake Ashford. Go, Blakey boy! Go, Blakey! He's hit the score! Well, look at that. Yes, I oh, yep. This is what I do for breakfast. This is how I roll. Blake Ashford is into score, but he was delivered up a lovely little ball. No, he didn't break a sweat, did he? Nice play, deception through the middle. And it was Rehi who did so well at the other end physically, dominant tackle-wise. It was a fan from Blake Ashford that time on Rehi. And he strolls in the corner for his most dominant play of the game yet so far. 20 minutes gone, 16-6 with the kick to come from the sideline. Well, he spoke how important it was to, to be in control, and you're right, it is called Mills. Look at you. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> oh, lodged straight in there. Um, so, you know, we mentioned how important it is to control that set well off scoring and all of your good work immediately undone. Especially when they got the reward. They, they did enough to get the penalty. But then to turn it over straight away, it would be frustrating for the coach. And just give yourself no ability to put any pressure on the opposition. And because they've conceded no pressure, they've got all the freshness in the world to put their players on as they designed, as they've practiced, as they've schemed. And, and the quality players like Blake Ashford, like Blake Ashford Take for a reward. So here we are with Kalis Putoko. Just a meter in. Kalis and his shadow on the far side of the field. He misses that one. Do you know how many ball boys end up being top flight footballers? Do you? I've seen pictures, guys like Tuvi. I don't know if you were a ball boy in your day, but a lot of these guys take such an interest in footy that they become top first class players themselves yeah there'd be a lot that grow around 16 to 6 glad to have you with us this afternoon a celebration of local rugby league here and a bit again big ups to sky who see the merit in bringing this local footy uh, to us you know a glimpse of some of the neat up and coming talent uh, some of the wonderful contributors I was talking to uh, uh, Pudu, who is one of the managers for the Waikato team. Now, for years, uh, I've been calling him Nama. And I think it was a typo back in the commentary that we did back in 2016 when he was a player, right? And instead of saying Namu, it said Nama, N-A-M-A. -A. And so I've been calling him Nama all his life, and so have all his teammates, oh. knowing full well that his name is Namu, but uh, because, you know, his on-screen persona was Nama. They all call him Nama Puru. He's a lovely dude. And uh, he's involved with the Waikato squads. Still playing the odd game as well. Tony Fido again successful in the local competition. And uh, to all of those Waikato ex-teammates and players, you can revert back to Namu Puru, please. <laughs> I remember doing a, uh, a, a game um, years ago, too, with uh, Shane Cooper. And there's a bloke called Lamont Copestake who was a good footballer. He used to yep. run around. Do you remember him? Yep. And, uh, of course, I've, I've called him, well, Copestake, they just score. And they keep coming, yeah, Copestake, that was a good try. I sort of let that one roll. And, of course, he scored another try. And I'm going, oh, Copestake, this is a difficult yeah, name yeah. to say. I says, Copestake scored another try. And Shane comes in with... Yeah, chopsticks caught it. I said, mate, I can cop coke stick, but I can't cop chopstick. <laughs> uh, so, you know, he's a, he's a funny character to work with our mate Shane Coop. If you're watching today, Coop, you're an absolute legend. Oh, look at this. Oh, no, the referee will call it back. Didn't Cooper stuff a, stuff a football up the back of his jersey in a game over in England? If he did, that would have been a Mike McLennan plan. You know, he no put it on the back of his jersey, said so yeah. I could find the ball. I wouldn't put it past them. They were so innovative back then that 
Mount Albert crew, and especially when Mike went to St. Helens and Shane Cooper and Tia Rapati, George Mann, those guys, that team, they were also the team that came away with scoring a try off a head, but <laughs> they had uh, Paul O'Loughlin, a real tall centre, about 6'4". They got him to stand up at dummy half and head the ball over, <laughs> and St. Helens scored a try off it. Going down in history. Moon weight. Rest long, Mike. He's a uh, great ambassador for our code. Still, here we are now, poised for Waikato to be able to get one back. The back rower gets it on to Gudgeon. He's still got it, and he tries to offload it. It's gone backwards. Play on, says the referee, over the top. The ball is successful. The dive for the corner is juicy. The dive for the corner is spot on. And it's Kasten Baretoka who makes the try for Waikato and making something out of nothing, keeping themselves in the game. The concern for Waikato is not so much their play down here, it's some of their defending, especially their one-on-one, -on -one, because when they get down here, they're able to create some of these opportunities. And Baretoka, nine out of 10 for the dive, son. Well taken. And gets him another try, second for the day for the Waikato side. Getting down here, they're posing a lot of problems for the Bay of Plenty Lakers. And going back to their last set, they've got to think really hard about what you were saying to get to their kick. They've got to get to a, to a completion to get themselves into a bit of a grind, which is a mark of how they started this game. So 16 to 10 with the kick from wide out. Yeah, um, and obviously last time they conceded a try because they didn't control the set off the back end of their success. And another chance to add two for Ivan Rehana. The last one was from uh, pretty close range. Those beautiful ranges just behind in the western side of Garawahia. Not sure that so many of these young guys have trapped them. Such a strong geographical feature of the Rohe. So here we are, right with Ivan. Let's see if he's got what it takes to slot this one and pick up two. Bringing it around nicely, coming around, coming around. Oh, it's just hit the upright. Yeah, it looked like it was just short. He had the direction on the play again. Wonderful long pass. Sees Baretuka open, Baretuka. Open there, just needed to catch the ball and well put down in the corner. 16-10, scoreline. Great to have you with us here on Sky Sports, continuing coverage of our regional rugby league competitions. It's the Bay of Plenty Lakers under the tutelage of Jeremy Siolepa uh, up against Waikato, who are mentored by John Taitua. At the back here, what I hear? Boom, as they come forward. 24 is Tara Letonga, who's in the mix now. That's him just getting up off right here. That's your ball for Waikato. Uh, they need to get to the back end of their set. Troy Brown continues to impress. That's him with another tackle. He's got a big engine, the hooker. Hilti Brown in number eight. Twenties Waratana Hartley, who's uh, getting himself involved plenty in that defensive effort from Taya. Kicking game important here this afternoon. 12 to play here. And that one has gone across field and into touch, so worked out pretty well for the home team. Yeah, and that's exactly what the coach would have wanted. Get to the end of your set. Try and make as many metres as you can, but try and finish with the best kick possible. I think the stoppage of play plays to the Waikato's team advantage just to give themselves an opportunity to get their breath back and go on the defence with as much energy as possible. Exciting rugby league weekend. What with all the action coming in tomorrow. That's why you're leaning in the big grand final there, Willie Poaching. I'm going for the Panthers. I've just got a feeling that their experiences at this time of year and how they get it done uh, counts for a lot. 
I think the loss of Nelson Osofa Solomon is a big one for the Melbourne Storm and just leading towards the Panthers. Exactly. I mean, it's uh, Eddie Arm with Tawara midweek. He's going over this. It's been 25 years since he won a premiership with the Melbourne Storm. Yep. It's the 99 premiership, of course. So uh, a bit of a gathering and a celebration. The fact that they're in the grand final is a real credit, though, obviously. You know, everyone thought that that was docked on and almost ignored it. But it will be a turnover, and Waikato will have the football. Under 10 to play here in the first half of this round five clash from Ngaro Wakia. Here's your try scorer, Mbaratoka. And in the moments that they troubled Countess Monaco last week, the Waikato side, was when they were able to bring the likes of Mbaratoka, especially uh, the fullback Rex Sullivan, when they were able to get their fast men around a dummy half and expose some fatigue in the opposing side, big men. That's when they had some joy. If they can do that again in the back end of this half, I'm sure they'll get that joy again. Long-time contributor to the Waikato Colours, Jerome Flood gets them into good position as the back rower again. Carts forward solidly. Rangi out of dummy half. Ken Rangi, then he gets the ball across to the new man on the field. This is Samisi Lutmuala. Uh, Samisi is, uh, well, he's an older guy. He's been away from the game for a long time, but proves his value each time he puts the colours of Waikato on. And that was great defensive work and a good set for the home team. And look at Rehi. He's come up with a couple of deaf touches with a kick. Just a short kicking game. Looks outstanding. Playing on the run, engaging the defenders, bringing them up, exposing the space and increasing the space behind the defensive line. Puts enough on the kick and then is chasing strength. Forces a dropout. A couple of really good sets being put together here from the Waikato side. It's the local derby and everyone wants to get the two points from the game. And it's time to dish them up once again. Here comes Moala. Big strong carry from Samisi. Gets to play the ball and Flood who continues to add to his rugby league stocks with spirited runs right through the middle of the back rower again and he dummies and slices his beautiful try to Mahina Rangi. He's the skipper. He was the man I was told to keep an eye out for and I'm pleased I did because that was a wonderful try. While we're watching him though, obviously the Lakers defenders weren't onto him enough. Classy stuff from the back rower. And this is the reward for putting a couple of good sets together a couple of strong finishes and putting some defensive pressure onto the Bay of Plenty side having to defend back-to-back -back sets in the good ball area Mahinga Rangi the captain as you said leading from the front carrying with options inside and outside asking too many questions but the gas in which with which he took the line on showing the ball on the outside just half a read on the defensive slip had the pace to go through and put the ball down. And the kick is an easy one. It should be a tie-up here. And this is a great comeback for the Waikato side. So down now. Well, that one from wide out. Maybe just lacked some gas. I thought it uh, hit one of the cow horns, but either way, this is a much more straightforward conversion attempt for him. Ups to the ground staff here at the Panthers. As you can see, the rain starting to fall a little as well. We'll make the surface slick. It's not big rain. But it will be problematic. A little bit of drizzle coming in through Ngaroa here as we speak. And that's successful. So 16 points. Another look. Fantastic effort. We're locked up here. An intriguing battle here in the local derby, the Lakers and the Waikato squad as well. I bumped into uh, one of Joe Gwynn's mokopuna the other day. And it was, lovely Joe to, yeah, it was lovely to be reminded of Joe, who obviously is well uh, highly regarded in Waikato. His time as the uh, Coach of the Cougars, the Waikato Cougars of yesteryear. And 
and um, his muckle, the 18 year old, our muckles were playing in that tournament last week in oh, Rotorua. Nice. Yeah, and, uh, well, ours were the under 10s, but gee, it was fantastic. 120 teams, fantastic, 2,000 players. Um, no scores were kept, but every kid and every parent were keeping score. And that's outstanding seeing the next generations of those rugby league names coming through. Oh, beautiful it was. And of course, you know, everyone learns a haka, so there's that sort of sense of cultural pride that big ups to the organisers. Likewise, those will gather in Rotorua next weekend in that game we uh, touched on with uh, Sione Fomuina, the All Stars game as well. If you're in Rotorua next week, uh, make an effort. Right here, the kick. What's this bounce going to be like? And doing pretty good on his defensive work is Kasten Baratoka. Out of dummy half, Leavai. Looks like he's got some pace, Leavai. That's uh, Jerome again, flood across the top. Downstairs, Moila. Locked up at 16 all. Might not have uh, anticipated that or predicted it there, Willie. Not after the first couple of tries with which the Mount Plenty Lakers were scoring with ease, moving the ball around and Busting holes through the defensive line of the Waikato side, but they've got themselves back into this through some hard work and completing some good sets. We've got no issues with the ball. There are very few issues with carrying the ball and where they're moving it defensively. It's their one-on-one -on -one tackles they've got to try and keep making. As your try score, Mbaratoka has the football in centre field. He's happy enough to take the tackle this morning across the top to affect that. Fullback uh, chimes in Rex Sullivan. You've already said that you've seen him do some good things in 24. I'd like to see him inject himself more into the game. That was Taitoko with the quick play of the ball. Matthew on the far side. His opposite number, Putoko, equal to the task or the challenge defensively. Here's your try scorer, Taiolu. Another carry. 17 this time with it and look at that it's a lovely take from Baratuka and still it's with Waikato keeping the ball alive a back to the back Mahina Rangi Rangi holds the ball there's the pass the bounce well it just got away actually I think he's trying to line that one up for flood was it and Jerome couldn't quite get to the football that could be seen as a uh, chance gone begging. Oh, that's a definite chance that's gone begging for them. Mahingarangi again with his speed, seeing an opportunity. They had to play it on the run after not expecting the ball, but he needed some support. Those players around him, around him needed to be aware that they needed to push and expect the ball to come out. They didn't so, and it was turned over, and now they concede. A penalty going to Bay of Plenty, and they've missed touch. Bay of Plenty missed touch here. Oh, fortunately for them, it just goes out after bouncing infield. And they're on the attack here. And that scoring opportunity for Waikato. Down one end. Hopefully they don't concede here. And we'll see what the Bay of Plenty attack can come up with. Well, here they come, the Bay of Plenty squad. Dylan Clark with another good carry as they set themselves up. Hartley will get to his feet. Little with the football acting half now. So um, a good use of the interchange bench as it comes back to Connor Hohepa at the back. Hohepa to play at 10 metres out from the line. Lakers well positioned. Hartley finds Mordonga. Good solid D. Jerome Flood. He's good on attack and showing his usefulness as well on a defense here in the Lakers this time a run from dummy half they're only a few meters away as you can see defense needed here from Waikato locked up at 16 apiece last minute of the first half the crossfield kick is almost taken on the fly recovering and the referee will suggest the junior Taya has knocked the football on well that was good thinking though we've seen it work in the NRL plenty of times and it was sharp thinking to put the kick across, not too far off the mark. No danger times for the Waikato side. 
conceding a penalty and then having to go and, and fully work their try line defensively and work to last play as a pinpoint accurate kick. But unfortunately for Bay of Plenty, Junior Tyre couldn't take it cleanly enough and the knock-on turns the ball over to the opposition, the Waikato side rucking it out now. Well, it's been a really enjoyable first half of footy. Obviously, three tries apiece, 16 all as we come down to the last few moments of the first half. Great to have you with us here on Sky Sport, watching the men's championship for 2024. It might be at the foot of the table, but there is some excitement here in Ngarawa Wahia at the home of the Panthers. It's locked up at half time. The Lakers 16, Waikato 16, and you're watching from the home of uh, Rugby League Sky Sport. We'll be back in a moment. Have a look at those tries and first half action. We'll leave you now from Ngarawa Wahia for a short break. Thank you, Stacey. Was that Kelsa? Kelsey, yeah. Oh, that crowd though. Kia and welcome back. A little bit of rain around now in Ngārua Wahia, but we are locked up at 16 apiece. Three tries each and an intriguing battle here in the local derby between Waikato and the Bay of Plenty Lakers that opted to stay on the field. Let's have a look at the highlights here. I'll leave Willie Poaching to talk us through these ones, but the tries came pretty early. In fact, just seven minutes for the Lakers to uh, get their first one. Yes, and they were busting holes through the Waikato defence early doors. And as they moved the ball out, it was Daniel Holmes, the big front rower, who posts the first, first points for the Bay of Plenty Lakers to put them in the lead straight off the off. A well-taken try, playing at the line. And they responded straight away with their second try. Moving it out to the right-hand side. They use Blake Ashford as a, as a ploy. They go out to... Kalis Putoko with some speed and gas, and he passes it inside to Temana Tamari for the second try. And at this moment in time, scoring two quick tries in concession. Looked like the floodgates would have opened for Waikato, and they had to rely on their defence. Luki Rehe with some strong defence one-on-one. -on -one. 
driving the ball carries back. A loose pass. And that was welcomely taken from Taiulu to get Waikato's first. And that stood the scoreline at 12-6. But plenty on the attack again. And it was that man, Blake Ashford. Nice catch. Fend cruises to the try line into the corner. Simple one-on-one. -on -one, couldn't be made by Rahi. And Blake Ashford increases the score to 16-6. Kick wasn't able to be made from the sideline. And Waikato started to get themselves on a run. Mahingarangi, some smart football from him. He was around all the action and all the positive play for the Waikato side as he went out to Baritoka. Nice long ball from Rangi. Baritoka in the corner. That made the scores 16-10, but they weren't done for the half. He wasn't done, Mahingarangi. Great shape with the ball, asking too many questions of the defence. Showing some toe for a big man. And he gets a try for the Waikato side to tie it all up. Hence how we sit it at 16 all. And well done to the Waikato side to get themselves back in it. Yeah, absolutely. Willie Po Ching with us uh, today. We're going to take a quick break. As you can see, players almost ready to get underway for the second half. Rain bucketing down now in Ngarua Wahia. We'll rejoin the action in just a moment here. We'll take a break right here on Sky Sport. Well, hooky my no, as you can see, friends, uh, well, things have taken a bit of a turn during the halftime break, and the rain has absolutely arrived. We just had some images of players sheltering under the camera staff's umbrellas. So uh, I think our producers might start renting them out now next time a deluge comes down. It's right to left now, Waikato, with the football. And an intriguing battle ahead here in the last 40 for well, these two teams for 2024 in their representative strips. Here, here he comes again. Moala is very solid. And the defensive work of Jordan Tamaki is uh, appreciated by his teammates as well. I've really liked the way that the Bay of Plenty Lakers coach Siolepa has utilised his bench. 
especially at the back end. Well, just as it came, it seems to have eased off somewhat. This man has an appropriate surname for the action in these conditions. That's Jerome Flood, and uh, he'll play the ball on the halfway line. Yeah, and these conditions are going to change the game a little bit. You can see that whilst the rain may have stopped, it's still heavy underfoot, and there's a lot of puddles. They're going to have to be smart with their kicking game and how they carry into contact whilst being aware not to just play one out. I was impressed there by Patrick Taitoko's um, commitment down the left edge. He almost got that try he in the corner. Close, didn't he? Got, he got, got close. close. He made the touch coach think about his decision. Working uh, as acting half there in the white boots as Bailey. Bailey Little pushes it for Levay on the far side. He's wrapped up. Machu makes the tackle. I think we'll be in for a doozy second half here. The Lakers want to have win number two in their season after uh, maybe surprising some by beating the Whalers. Did you call that game, Willie? Yeah, they were fantastic. They were fantastic. This man with the ball now was so influential in that game. He played in the, in the 13 jersey on that day, which allowed him to get his hands on the ball so much in direct play. Obviously, Didn't get tackled a lot, but just knew what play to put on and when. Tenakwe, and that's the um, experience of Blake Ashford that Willie's referring to here. And I hear that uh, you're off back, back home to the other side of the world where you spent half of your life there, Willie Po Ching, as we see the kick through here. Willie's going back to Wakefield. Yeah, I'm off back to Wakey. Uh, shaky Wakey. As, shaky as a, Wakey, is that how it goes? As we call it, yeah. Hand off Snakey, one of those <laughs> ones. <laughs> shaky, so, shaky. Yeah. Wa it's back, Wakefield we're talking about yes, here. We're talking about Wakefield, West Yorkshire. So, yeah, I'm going across with uh, the Tor Samoa. We've got two tests against England Fantastic. coming up. Yep. One at Wigan and one at Headingley on the, on the 27th of October and the 2nd of November. So that's primarily what I'm going over for, but... Yeah, I'm going to stay over and spend Christmas with our two sons that are living over there. My wife will come over a little bit later in the year and, yeah, spend a bit of time back in my second home. Yeah, well, uh, 25 years is a long time to, to spend over in that part of the world. Good luck on the trip. We'll talk about that Samoan challenge uh, as well. Great opportunity for Samoa. Uh, as we see right here once again, getting Waikato nicely set here. Good opportunity for the home team. Little dummy slicing, looking for a runner. This is good from Kenalangi. It's the fifth and final tackle here for Waikato. Locked up at 16 apiece. Have Waikato got something here? The grubber to the end goal needs a chaser. And the chaser too slow to get there. And it will be the Lakers who will have the football. What's your role with the Samoan squad uh, for the internationals, Willie? Yeah, I'm assistant coach. Kapoi, congratulations. Uh, for Ben Gardner, the former Māori coach. Yes. And former assistant coach for the Kiwis for a long time. He's now the head coach for Samoa, and um, I'm working with him as, as the assistant coach and trying to put our squad together and formulate our plan to take on the English team over there. Yeah, it'll be a tough ask. Will be, yeah. will be. Tough conditions, yes. tough environment. Yep. And not a lot of teams have success over there. Um, including the Kiwis, but we're going to go over and try and change that. Why not? Uh, some more, you have access to some fabulous players. Uh, that team announced yet? Not too far away? Uh, Monday. Monday. Monday after the grand final, we'll, we'll bring our side out. Great. Be interesting to see who uh, makes themselves available. And then, of course, we've got the Pacifica Championship coming here. If you haven't already, book your tickets, Christchurch. Uh, the Kiwis and Australia. I was lucky enough to be in Hamilton last year for the 30-0 game. Still shaking my head in disbelief. But um, that was just a, the most amazing uh, showing by our home team. Amazing and outstanding. And a great reward for all those people that did turn up. Um, yeah, that's right. They weren't, they weren't the, the big... No, yeah, exactly. Well, you're right on it. But so happy for those that did turn up to the game and... and Witness history making afternoon. You know the way that the, the uh, over in England they all sing. Uh, it's part chant. of the tradition, and they yeah, chant. Yeah. Who makes uh, who makes them up? Who gets the crowd all synced up with that? Because sometimes it mounts smart You think, gee, it'd be nice to uh, to see everybody singing in unison a song or something to support the team. How does it all manage to uh, become part of the reality of the way they watch sport in England? Some songs are 50, 60 year old. 
and they just change a word or change a name. Usually uh, the players, they all have a chant. And the fans will make up a chant for them. And it's usually to a tune of a song. Yeah, yeah so they like have, a parody. They've got, they've got the song and they just make the parody out of it and, and put a name to it. So, yeah, some of the songs are outstanding, what they come up with, especially songs to which one, supporters, one set of supporters are singing a song about a player in an, op in an opposing team. And that... It's far from complimentary sometimes. Yeah, I bet it is. But did, hilarious. Did you join into uh, that as well when you are um, on the sideline? Yeah, some of the songs did. You can't feel, help but. They're catchy. Yeah, it's a great part of the uh, English way of supporting sport, uh, rugby union, certainly in football and uh, definitely in rugby league. Something to look forward to if you're ever travelling over those ways. Well, good luck with the Samoan team. And good luck to both of these teams as well. Seven gone, rain bucketing down, trying conditions. But I tell you what, the uh, both set of players will be very pleased if they're able to come away with the win here today. It is the local derby as once again we see Kasten Baritoka with the football and almost uh, uh, squashed it became almost an aureole then, didn't he? As uh, the big bloke leant in on him. Over the halfway line. That's a little bit of a pause in intensity for Machu. Flood. Goes on to it again. He's been very good this afternoon, Jerome Flood. Sure. Dangerous every time he's touched the ball. Well, that was a terrific run. It's like the floodgates opened. I suppose, they've, I suppose they've used that plenty of times as well. Ball's gone backwards. Waikato's all in possession. Come on, get up and play the ball. Here we go. Kenalangi. Now we're talking inside. They come. You know, they talk about out enthusing your opponents. You might not have the skill level, the size, but if you're just, you know, relentless in your pace, you can get the job done. And here's another penalty, not back to 10. Sensible carry as well. Well, those are evidenced by your will and your desire to want to play quicker, to want to push and play more urgency. There he is. Scored a try earlier on. That's another one as well. He's done it again. He's done it again. Eric Taiulu from close range. Hard to stop. Plenty tough. He's got big, broad shoulders as well and looks powerful. I just spoke about will and desire, and that's what that was. Carrying four defenders off a quick tap. Not a lot doing here. And they'll be very disappointed with that defensive effort. The Lakers, four, five, and almost six defenders in close proximity to help prevent that try. But Eric Tayulu gets a second of the day. I'll give him a rap for his strength, but that was just will and want to get the ball over the try line and get his side the lead. So, like I think we'll get the chance to add the extras here with Ivan Rehana. Another uh, shot there. You can see the what would you, the brooding clouds, I guess, in the background here at the moment. The rain's eased up momentarily. But it could return at any time. You're watching Sky Sport. This is the men's championship for 2024. And the last game for these two proud Rohio regions. Waikato, Bay of Plenty, round five. Rehana, looking to put the icing on the cake here for the try, second try for Taulu. From close range, and no problem there. So it goes out to 22 points to 16. Here's another look at it. And well done to Waikato, making the most of all the field position. Again, Eric Taulu, you can see how excited he is, and well, well he should be. And with these conditions, it's about patience. And your kickers getting the ball in the right positions and then you chase to pin the opposition as far down the field because it's so tough to carry out of your own end. And the team that can make the opposition do it most and do it time and time again, I'm sure will come away with the win this afternoon in this one. Thank you. As you look to uh, announce the Samoan squad, it'll be the same for Stacey too, I guess, this week. Uh, the name of the Kiwi squad. 
we're hearing reports that a lot of clubs are sort of putting the squeeze on some of their players about availability. Is that something that you are prepared to encounter uh, as you named the Samoan squad or have those issues already been resolved, Willie? Yeah, we're encountering some of that. There's some players. You're going to name some names? No, not at this moment. What, are you sure? You can't come out? <laughs> Is it Brian Tor? Is it Jerome Luai? Well, those, those guys that are involved in the grand final, we're waiting to see it. Hopefully they come through unscathed. Mm -hmm. um, at this moment in time, they're open for us to select. There's been nothing said about them, but um, being respectful Look out. to their clubs and teams. Hey, talk, excuse me, you can, we'll come back to that in a moment. They're stepping back on the inside off oh, nice. Groovy. Oh, that is beautiful. That is outstanding rugby league and a great individual piece of play. But I'm going to give Rahe a real wrap. I love it when the halfbacks play on both sides of the ball. Look, for most of the afternoon, Luca Rahi has played on the left-hand side. He switches over to the right, plays a long ball out to his wingman. And Baratoki, with some footwork, changing direction. And in these conditions, it's hard to change direction as a defender. Comes back on the inside and picks up his second for the day. Didn't have to do the acrobatic dive this time. Just put it down, another four-pointer. And their lead goes out to 10 with the kick to come. Yeah, well, he just stepped across. And, of course, as the defenders were heading his way, he was able to elude them with some hot stepping. And um, I think Groovy might have stepped out, might have slipped out of my mouth for the first yeah. time in a commentary. <laughs> oh, that's Groovy, man. That was. <laughs> that's Groovy, baby. <laughs> groovy, baby. <laughs> oh, gee. Things that can happen in the commentary booth. That's going back to the Zambuck. Oh, place. that's <laughs> going back to the Zambuck. So you're going to have to check, check yeah, that well, one out with somebody. I, I, now, now you say it and say what it was. The name does ring a bell. Yeah. I think I remember Dad talking about it at games. Go get the Zambuck. <laughs> well done. As you're saying, so many defenders, almost seven of them over chasing. Because of the conditions, they couldn't come back on the angle. But it took up. Thankfully, scores a second four-pointer for the afternoon. Now by have plenty. Trail by 12. Yeah, work to be done too. They're, they're a very proud uh, region, the Bay. So they'll be wanting to get hold of the football. They have to do that. And this man who just seen with a tackle in 11, it, it could really lean down to him. To muster the troops. I know he's not the captain. And he'll be you know, just happy to be a contributor to the squad but his experience is telling and uh, it's where he runs the angles he utilizes that'll have some impact on those around him today so Blake Ashford really needs to uh, start directing this team around as well as other top talent that they've got there well, composure is important and that's what he can do he can calm them down and keep them focused on the job at hand and the process that they need to play to rather than trying to chase things plenty of time on the clock there's plenty of time for them to keep playing. Blake Ashford can just try and keep him calm and, and almost be a coach out there on the field. And the, both Flood brothers are in the mix there. How's this bounce going to be? And uh, it was kicked dead too desperately by Putoko. Had to put it away. So Jaden Flood's on now in 16, alongside his brother Jerome. Both have similar builds too. Good sort of back rower type builds. Tall, rangy quick and they're really injecting themselves in here into the action if you have just joined us this is Ngarawa Wahia and the home of the Ngarawa Wahia Panthers and it's part of a double header today with Sky and uh, earlier on Canterbury too strong for the Waikato Wahine here in Ngarawa Wahia and at the moment uh, what will be pleasing for the home supporters 28-16 Waikato leading the Lakers. 15 gone of the second half. Billy Gudgeon again with the, uh, with the carry. Holding it up nicely. Like the work of Mahina Rangi. A number of these players actually went up to uh, have a run 
of the Jersey Fleet squads up in Tamaki for the Warriors. 16, doing what he can is Jaden Flood, who I touched on before. He's almost to the line himself, Jaden. That ball is, well, it's a slippery ball now too. So. Yeah, it's not the play, not the play in these conditions to try and. Not the crash ball from close range, you not reckon? A, not close when the defensive line's sitting on you. Tough, tough to play to catch. And even if he does, the chances of him scoring are minimal. Unnecessarily, unnecessary pressure. Right in front of the post is uh, Gavin Causa. Feed the scrum. Uh, let's see what the Lakers have got. As Junior Taya cuts the ball forward to his feet now. They'll opt to go down the short side. This time it's Thomas Leavey, and he tries to get the pass away. Didn't need to, but has come off a, uh, a Waikato player. Uh, the players are appealing to the referee, saying that, that we thought it was knocked on. He was well sighted, and and was it? And that, uh, that big slam yeah. deemed unnecessary. I think he's got it for a crusher. 21. Billy putting, Gudgeon. Putting him in that vulnerable position. Putting all his weight through the head and neck. And something they've clamped down on for a couple of years now. And for player safety, well done, referee. I just want to say about the Waikato side, you can see them playing with different shorts and socks and it looks like they're celebrating their local rugby league and their, their local clubs. I'm talking about Ngarawai here, being a proud club at the Waikato. A production line for so many players to come out of. It's great to see the Waikato team itself going back. You can see they're wearing different shorts and socks and some Tony Faro and some Tigers shorts out there. So it's great to see them. See, nothing much gets past you, eh? even the name of the Superette. <laughs> eh? Hey, uh, Willie Bo-Ching. No, no, you're quite right. I, I did talk with the Waikato connect, uh, Connections. forgot to mention that. That's exactly what's going on. It is an acknowledgement of pride in their, in their clubs and an opportunity for them to uh, strut their colours uh, as well as the Waikato strips. So, well done. You're very observant. What model is that car third from the right? <laughs> and the car I can't part. give you the model, but I'll give you the registration. <laughs> <laughs> Get up your money. 28-16. Bit of luck there going to Bay of Plenty. It wasn't the best kick into touch. But the referee saw it come off the hand of a white cutter player, but they still get the ball back. Well, Hippa turned it on, or showing it on the inside anyway. Work to be done here. Tono Papita Penegestro. That's him in jersey number 15. Waikato with the football. Ashford needs to try and help to steer the ship here. There's plenty of talent as it goes to Hohepa. Holds it up. Now Moronga. And he's flung to ground under the tackle of Jaden Flood again across the top. He's a bit dusty getting to his feet too, Vince. Eventually there, Connor, first receiver, and happy to take the tackle. Gudgeon, you can hear in the background, the connection sound that they've got nothing. So here it comes to Ashford. He certainly had something. He may still possess something as well as Putuko. He's darting around like he's walking on hot coals. Up the middle, looking for the whole shot, and Gavin Causa gets hold of the ball and then gets it either jar loose or did he try to kick that one through? He tried to kick it through, found some space. You know, the kick pressure from the Waikato side, not alert enough to understand that he still needed to make the tackle. Nice play from Kauza to come through, but great work from Baratuka. He's Scored a couple of tries, but he's also defensively aware of everything that's going on. You have an impressed by him as well. He's the big number 10, Dan Holmes. And the mix, Dan was the first try scorer after seven minutes for the Lakers. Find themselves down two tries now as the downtowner from Lukey is 
good. Not a 40-20, but it uh, certainly is a good meter, eater, and gives his teammates uh, a bit of a breather as well. And a smart kick as well has been a long distance kick. They were deep, they were struggling to get out of their own end. And struggling at this moment in time for energy. It gives themselves a breather. As you can see, the Bay of Plenty side taking a long time to get back behind the ball. Smart kick by Rahi. Taya plays the ball. Lake is just maybe not as coordinated as they were earlier on in the match at the moment. Bit of one out running. Uh, fatigue could be setting in, and that would be understandable too. As Leverty Brown gets the ball jarred loose. Flood comes up with it. Jaden this time. He's just across the halfway line. And that's Why the danger. That's the danger in these in this, these types of conditions. Trying to lead with the ball. You're susceptible to defenders getting a knock on the ball and it just coming free. That's in Baratuka again. Right side play. The Flood boys are having a... A real contribution here for Waikato this afternoon. Commentator's curse, of course. It's very real, isn't it? Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, you know. We're we'll putting the mockers on everyone. They used to uh, work on uh, doing some commentary or, or commentary uh, in England as well before you came back home, Willie? Yeah, I, I did a bit of radio stuff uh, for quite a while. In, in Wakey Wakey? Uh, Around, around the north um, for BBC and uh, fortunate enough to travel around to most games and call the games and, and cut my teeth in radio. Yeah. Then did a bit of TV at the 22 World Cup, which uh, I really enjoyed. And, um, hence the decision to try and pursue and chase oh, yeah. any opportunities there. As There's Ashford. Blake. Blake, call him home, mate. He's our mate. Go, Blakey. Go. Oh. He's got dragged down by the fullback too. Good work there from Rex Sullivan. Quick play the ball. Out of dummy half, spinning towards the line. Towards the line still. And that ball now has been stripped. It will be a penalty and fair enough too. As we see Blake Axford once again. Fantastic ball by Koza. You can see straight away he's looking around for some support. He knows how far it is to go. Nice work by Sullivan, the fullback for the Waikato, just to position him. He knew he had him for speed. Troy Brown with a tap. The Lakers need to be next to score. Bailey Little takes it in, close by. Good opportunity for them, the Lakers. Can they get one back here and make the back end of this game a really intriguing battle as the ball goes to Holmes? He's cut down 12 out from the line. Picking up is Troy Brown. Through the left edge they come on to the try scorer Holmes. He's across the line and down with the try is JP Leavai. That's exactly what the Lakers needed. Leavai scores on the far side of the field. 28-20 with a kick to come from wide out. Yeah, the Bay of Plenty side had the defence from the Waikato side scrambling and in all sorts of problems. As they play out to the left, they had them for numbers and they just draw and pass. Simple plays. Nothing too elaborate needed. And JP Leavai gets a try in the corner for Bay of Plenty after, after that great break by Blake Hashford. They polish it off with a four-pointer. And the 28-20, to 20, they're back in this one. Still some time for them to play. It's not out of their reach, and this is a big, big kick coming up from Gavin Kozer. Yeah, far from being out of their reach, here's a great opportunity too. Well, isn't that this the way that uh, you like it earlier on in the day? You caught a close encounter as well. That was Vulcans. Vulcans and Counties. Yeah, and that, uh, that one went down to the wire. Well, this one very much could as well. We'll just wait for this kick and reflect on that previous game. And where we're at, if this one is to sail through, it'll just be a six-point ball game from wide out. A tough conversion. Hitting it nicely. It's going good. It's going good. It's going great. In fact, it's like a well-cooked hungy. It is right there. And everything tastes delicious. <laughs> it is outstanding. Wonderful play. Wonderful kick. You can see, as we've seen, Earlier in the day, little ball boy, kicking coach as well, mirroring him and telling him where to, like a good caddy, telling him where the wind is, where to kick the ball. He was on the money. Great kick from the touchline. 28, 22, 15 to go. 
I tell you what, it, that just reminds us of the last game too, earlier on in the day. That was the Vulcans and Counties. Stingrays went down to the wire in and, and that one as well. Yeah, they were trading try for try. The Vulcans never led in the game at all. They'd pull back a try and then come back to, to tie the game up. It was 6 0, 6 all, 12 all, 12 6, 12 all, and it kept going on until it was 22 20, 22. And then when the dying seconds, the Vulcans scored a try to take the lead for the very first time. And that was a lead they weren't going to give up because it ran out of time after that and they won the game 26 22. So, yeah, that was a tight one all the way through. It was a fantastic game to call. Great. And this one looks as though it could uh, finish in similar fashion. Well, can the Bay of Plenty, with that try, inspire them to go back-to-back, -back, working hard to ensure that doesn't happen? Uh, Mbaratuka has uh, been very impressive on the right wing for Waikato today. Aishwit again, uh, facing the wrong way. And then Raihe driving his opponent towards the touchline. He's had a good game, the standoff. He's a big standoff. But his kicking game has been very sensible. He's got a lovely kick on him. Waikato realised too that they've made some inroads here with that defensive play. Uh, last play turn, turnover. Not aware of what tackle it was. And that's a side issue too. This some is of the trouble you can run into when you run the fourth play on the to the sideline. Jordan Grace has the ball. But it took it again. I love the way the young guy gets himself involved in the game. Comes in looking for work. That's the way you get uh, noticed. Jaden Flood and his uh, brother, Jerome, have been really great today for Waikato. It's the drop-off ball on the inside. First chase Kennedy. He goes across field. Kennedy cut down a copybook tackle by Mortimer. Beautiful defensive play. Rehana keeps it alive. Gudgeon this time. And a wall of Lakers supporters, they know the importance of the set right here, right now, as Fat Boy Slim would say. Out it comes to Luki Lai here. Oh, and the ball's been knocked down. And it's an, and then it's lost again. Well, the referee has a bit to adjudicate on here. Now, your for colour? What's your read? Yeah, I didn't think it was a one-on-one. -on -one. He may have a knock-on for Waikato. He couldn't quite get the purchase or the space on the kick right here. And you see here, Rangi had his hands around the ball, but it came loose more. They have, they have plenty trying to move the arm away rather than him trying to strip it. But as he touched the ball, as it came loose, it was a knock-on against Waikato. Well done, ref. Gavin calls it to feed the scrum here. The local derby, and it's going to be a battle to the finish line. Everyone wants to have a, a winner's beer tonight. Taya has the football. Rolls across. I've been really uh, enjoying Troy, Brown, uh, Troy Brown's work today. That's him in the acting half role. Just been so consistent as Hepper again chimes in. Morton has been good also. That's him with the football. But Waikato realise how threatening these players are. This is a lovely carry. Look at this from Dylan Clark. Beautiful ball back on the inside. Slick work to Tedavano. Hasn't had a lot to do. Crunch City. This time as Jaden Flood comes across the top. And looks to uh, squash his opponent through the hands. Cause a cutout ball. Here's Hford. Hford flick pass from Hford. Back on the inside. But couldn't quite get away. I think that's Tamaki has the football. I'll get another read on it. 18. Great play. Great play by Bay of Plenty. Swing it out both sides of the field. They go out to the left. And they get some joy through Dylan Clark, who's been dangerous all afternoon. And when he makes a break, he makes a long break, as he did then. Then they come out to the right-hand side, trying to last play. And now they can see the penalty. And that's disappointing, too. Deep into the set. They just had another tackle or two to make. And they uh, would have got the turnover or a scrum. Yes, uh, Zaya Senior is on in 18 for the Bay of Plenty squad. And Waikato will be, be happy enough to just take a bit of a breather. Field position is going to be important here as we approach the last 10 minutes of play. This is a fitting conclusion for both of these two teams' seasons. 
and it should be a fight to the finish line. I mean that uh, not literally, because both teams have played in great spirit here this afternoon. There's been no niggle, no dusty stuff. Just everyone having a go, and uh, uh, that's to be applauded as Chase Kennedy puts it forward as well. Kenna Ruggi has also been good at his distribution role today as he gets wide out to flood. Jaden will play it back to Rex Sullivan. Rehana now. Gudgeon spinning in the tackle. Having a chance to look. A field goal's not out of the question. Put just an extra layer of pressure on the chip into the end goal is going to beat everybody. No, and that was a planned play. They had Luke Rahi on the left-hand side. They used him as a foil, went out to the right. You could see Sullivan was screaming up through the middle the whole time, trying to get that banana kick back on the inside. Just too much on it. They've got to defend seven tackles now. Everyone's working hard, as you would expect to, as we count it down into the last 10 minutes. They've done all the hard work. If anything, talking with the Lakers connections, uh, Jerry Siu Lepa, as we see Ashford again. Now, he knows the importance here of attitude in the back end, how it can inspire as Gavin Causa shoots forward out of the line as well. Tedevano to play the ball. Lakers. I think the Lakers have got something going on here. And there's the big number eight on the charge. Rewati Brown, he's 15 from the line. Look out as Troy Brown comes. Here's a penalty. They'll get a full set. Just getting too quick. It's getting too quick at the moment for the Waikato defensive efforts. They're going too fast. It's Corsa. Tackle number one. Ashford with his hands in the air. That's him in shot here from the sideline. Trying to burrow across is Troy Brown. Been singing his praises all afternoon, Troy. This time he doesn't get there. The ref will ask it to be backed up. But you get a feeling here that the Lakers have got something in. And their coach recognizes that the experience they've gained this year has been very important playing against higher quality opposition that is a knock-on and that will be tremendously disappointing knowing the time that uh, has to go in the game and also that they've fought hard to get good field position yeah he was saying that uh, these opportunities to play against uh, uh, otago auckland teams etc really helps in the development of this Bay of Plenty franchise or Rohe, but especially a reminder of how important it is to go the 80. You know, a lot of our teams are very competitive across 50, maybe 60, but it's that back 20 minutes that they, they fall away and can concede big points. So if you can learn to conserve some energy for that back period or train harder, I, I don't know what quite the answer is, uh, it'll help teams like the Lakers, like Waikato, in their campaigns of 25. I think a big one for that is trying to help enhance and improve the local competitions. Where these other sides have met some of what you're talking about, the other teams kicking on at the back end of games, has been against the Vulcans, it's been against Akarana, and it's been against Counties Monaco. So the Auckland competition where those three teams play, that's quite strong. And they're having to do that every single week. I'm not sure if that's the case without being disrespectful to these other competitions, especially yeah, Otago. And, you know, they've just got to try and get more numbers, more competitors, and try and increase the intensity with which they play out every single week. So then that transforms to them being able to handle it when they come and play for their provincial sides. Right on the money. You should be um, an assistant coach of an international squad. <laughs> uh, good on you, Willie. Long time, uh, a lot of skin in the game. Wonderful career. And of course, uh, an example to many Pacifica athletes of what's possible. Uh, if you put your head down, train hard, take your, take your mahi seriously. Um, and, uh, how many seasons of pro ball did you end up playing? I know you spent 25 over 16. there. 16. 16 years of pro footy. Yep. Fantastic. Driving a Bentley. <laughs> Not with three kids. <laughs> Some born over there. Yeah, the youngest one. The youngest one was born there. He's, uh, well, they're all, of course, the older two were born in Australia. They've grown up there. They've been schooled there. Mm. Their friends are there, and they're uh, very much English. But proud. Proud Māori.
proud Samoan, proud Torres Strait Islander, and we're all of those heritages. And Fantastic. Myself and their mum have driven that into them whilst they've grown up in the north of England and made them aware of what blood runs through them and um, you know, the sacrifices that their grandparents made for us to be where we are. Beautiful. I hear, I hear they've invited some homeless people to live in your house in Wakefield. <laughs> yeah, well, let me see when I get home. <laughs> let me see when we get home. Just a break and play yeah. here. Uh, time for us too to uh, reflect on, well, not just uh, these franchises, but the ones that we won't see again in 24. Uh, obviously, the finals next week, Willie. Um, you're moving on soon after that, back to, uh, to England. But, um, you know, you've got to have these teams that don't taste success to make up a competition. For sure, and uh, whilst I'm talking about helping the local competitions, this is a way of doing it, by exposing some of these guys, um, especially some of those guys that were playing for Waikato, uh, for Otago, some of those students that play both sports, they play a bit of rugby union, and as we look forward to that final next week with the Auckland Vulcans and the counties, Monaco Stingrays, Saturday 12th of October, live at 12pm here on Sky Sports. Um, those guys that play both rugby union and rugby league don't get exposed to the intensity unless they're, they're put in this environment. Yeah. So this competition is really, really important to helping the game throughout New Zealand. I took your corridor, Oli Po Cheng, in the commentary position and uh, really pleased to be calling some of the finals with him next week as well. 28-22 as we uh, drift into the final five minutes of the action from League Park, Rugby League Park in Ngāna Wahia. It's Waikato who have the football. Much to the disdain of Daniel Holmes, who thinks, well, we need it more than you. That's Holmes working hard. This is Flood. He's had a good contribution, Jaden, since uh, being utilised off the bench this afternoon. Rangi, to Rangi. That's uh, brothers, Kenna and Mahina. Well, they're up in front on the scoreboard, so sensible play. I mean, I know it's slippery conditions. But a one-pointer would be pretty useful at this stage of the game. I wonder if they're at all considering it. Stepping back up into the right zone. Popping up the pass nicely, too, to the back rower. This is Mahina Rangi. He's right in front of the post. There's a good chance here to finish it off. But instead, they'll go through the hands. This might be even better. There's a dive for the football. Almost could have been there as well. And diving for the finish was Paddy Taitoko. And just couldn't quite get enough of a finish. I was just going to say that the clock is the enemy, the biggest enemy to the Bay of Plenty side. And there couldn't even be the scoreboard. Had they gone, that was prime opportunity, straight in front of the sticks, 10 metres out. I don't know if they're looking at a knock-on there from Bay of Plenty, but that's definitely a knock-on from Taitoko for me. And because it's gone dead, it looks like it'll be a seven-tackle set. To the Bay of Plenty side. He yeah, read that nicely, Willie. So this will be there. The last hurrah, last chance to learn, as the saying goes. And the tap to be taken on the 20 metre line. Gavin Causa does just that. A settling run. I'm not quite sure where they were heading to, I guess, as uh, Letonga takes the ball. Senior. Wrapped up by Kennedy with assistance there by Rangi. Back up the inside. Where is Ashford? Keep your eye out for him. That's him with the football now. He asks for a runner to come back on the inside. Towards touch. And he's thrown into touch. You can hear the elation on the sideline as Waikato realised that their first win of the year may not be too far away. And you can see Blake Ashford making that break down the right-hand side. He was looking for Paul Tuckle to come back on the inside. You can see him calling him. And even when he doesn't, that's an outstanding piece of defensive play by Paddy Tautoko, the winger for Waikato, who missed out on the try just 30 seconds ago and called upon to come up with a great defensive effort. Forces a turnover, forces him into touch. Two minutes to play. They've got to soak up as much as the clock as they can, this Waikato team. Kalis Putuk has had a good game today too. I'd hate for him to feel that it's his fault that his team didn't get uh, the draw. Uh, I know that Blake was calling him in, but uh, he almost got the pass back on the inside anyway before being bundled into touch. Hioi Anō 
And uh, here is a great chance for this squad from Waikato. Lots haven't gone their way this year, but perhaps they'll come away with this two points. And that'll mean a, a great deal to them this afternoon. It's been an intriguing battle anyway when we look at the tries. Five tries for the Waikato squad. Four for their opponents today. It's taken at the back. And now this is it. There's the grubber kick. The kick through is needed again. Does that stay in? Oh, I have a thought for a moment. Something special might occur for Gavin Clauser. It was streaking down the right edge. He was lucky twice when the ball did stay in the field of play. The third time, though, third time unlucky, as yeah, the saying goes. The first time, I thought he, he was lucky. The second time, he was right in his luck even more. And it, I agree. I didn't think there was going to be a third time, and there wasn't for him to kick and regather unless he put a big, long have it down through the middle of the field. So Waikato will be content just to soak up the clock here as Kennedy takes it in. Well, great defence there from Troy Brown. He's just been an absolute workhorse today for the Bay of Plenty Lakers. Well, Jeremy Siolepa will be disappointed not to secure their second victory for 2024. He too acknowledges the importance of success for these smaller franchise or regions. And I think both squads can hold their heads high when they depart. Ngāna Wawahi is home ground here. Little knock on here. So is there one final twist? In fact, it's a, a penalty for Waikato. Yeah, it looks like uh, the marker may have kicked up the ball. Yeah, it's great if uh, Waikato are to go on and win this. They decide to take the penalty um, in order to put themselves two scores ahead. With the clock gone, we're going to win this one. And I just want to say, for the Waikato side, three weeks ago, they were, they were hammered by, by the Vulcans, 18-0. They had to come back last week and play the, the other team who had, were unbeaten in the, in the county's Manukau Stingrays. They gave a better account of themselves. They improved, which is what their coach wanted. And today, they've gone one better. They've improved out of sight from that 18-0 drubbing that they conceded against the Vulcans to today winning the game. And full congratulations to the whole team and everyone involved, and especially their coach, John Taitua, for all the work that he's done to turn it around and get them back into this position and finish their season strongly. And uh, precisely. You want uh, young guys, young men, and perhaps even older guys who are more mentors in these squads uh, to feel good about the season. And I think both teams can leave 2024 knowing that they did their best. In the end, Waikato secured their first win of the tournament with a 28-22 result. In fact, that might even be uh, out again to 30, bearing in mind uh, that penalty. And so congratulations to them. Uh, great effort, full time. And it's the Waikato squad who are winners against the Lakers at Ngārua Wahia. Great to have you with us here this afternoon. get a chance to uh, hear some thoughts as we uh, look through some of the highlights of the action here from Ngārawa Wahia and our post-match interviews to come off the back of these as we get another look at some of these wonderful tries that were scored through the course of the afternoon. It was that back row on the left edge that threatened all afternoon Dylan Clark for Bay of Plenty that made the inroads and then it was Daniel Holmes to open up the scoring for the Bay of Plenty side to give them the 6-0 lead and well worth that lead they were, Bay of Plenty. And then they followed it up three plays later with the play out to Kalis Putoko. The damaging centre opened up in the dry conditions to put Tamana Tamari out for their second try. And it looked like the floodgates were going to open against Waikato. They had to rely on their D. Luki Rahi, strong in defence. And Taulu, he scores. First to the ball, the loose ball on the ground. And then Zaysford, who uh, had a pretty clear run as well to pick up his uh, only try of the first half. Uh, and that put them out to 16 points to six. At that stage, it was looking pretty ominous. But one of the players of the afternoon was the right wing for uh, for Waikato. Um, and this is him scoring the, the first of his tries. That's Mbaratuka, 
uh, who scored a wonderful try in the second half as well, Willie. He did, and that was set up from their man, Mahina Rangi, who took the third try. Show and go, too much pace. And then when they just needed some Route 1 football, just play straight and direct, it was Taiulu for his second try. Playing tough and playing strong. This is a lovely piece of work too from the right winger. Look at him weaving back through the traffic and uh, just bamboozled his opponents who were trying to put him away. Uh, and this is uh, the Leavite uh, try as well. Uh, Aishwood, a decent run downfield. There's not a lot left in those older leagues nowadays. And Rick Sullivan rounded him up. And when they went out to the left, nice draw and pass. Dylan Clark, sleight of hand this time out to JP Leavay for what would be the last try. Make the score 28 22. We thought there was some hope with 15 minutes to go. But when they kicked the penalty with 30 seconds left on the clock, and the hooter goes just as Ray Hunter was kicking the goal. It's Waikato 30 for their first win of the tournament to close their season. They have plenty 22. Fantastic effort here this afternoon from Waikato and a masterstroke, really, for the local rugby league community to decide to bring it uh, to local grounds. Uh, I know Bay Russell hosted a game too earlier in the year, but you know it just uh, sits nicely as these squads come together. As I mentioned, it's something of a local derby, but a lot of these guys know each other from having played football in the younger grades for Waikoua Bay. And so uh, this sets of Kotahi Tanga and Fananga Tanga we're witnessing here, uh, some might just see it as a circle of people. But in actual fact, they're, you know, they're just paying tremendous respect to each other for playing a code that many of their parents played and supported as well. So this is a lovely touch and a fitting conclusion too uh, to the way that we have covered the um, matches throughout 2024. Uh, let's get some thoughts here from the winning captain, uh, Mahinarangi. I think it'll probably be from Waikato. And uh, Fred's got some thoughts from the skipper. Well, Mahinga, a lot of pride in that performance today. Oh, yeah, not happy with the boys. Um, we always knew it was going to be a tough one, but yeah, it's always good uh, to finish on a high, good finish on a win. You had a uh, you know, tough season, but today you really brought a lot of intensity to the game. Yeah, I don't know. It was just, you know, uh, playing against a, a team that was a bit close to us. You know, we know a lot of those boys, so it was always good to play against those fellas. And, and through the game, I mean, uh, you had a patch through the, through the middle of the second half. You pulled on a few points. And then it was a matter of holding on at the end there. Yeah, oh, that, that was kind of the game. But it started off sunny and it was fast <laughs> fast football. And then, you know, started raining. That's um, Wakato for you. And, um, yeah, you just had to grind it out. And it was at the end it was tough, but we had it. How did you find the competition overall? Oh, tough. It's been a tough campaign. But, like I said, it was good to finish off and um, get a win on the, under our belt. Awesome. Congratulations, mate. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and tough, I think, is a fair assessment. Uh, especially bearing in mind what you just uh, shared with us. Let's have a look at some of the results too, Willie. Uh, in fact, I think we might be able to get some thoughts too from the Lakers uh, connections. But isn't that a nice touch uh, of all the guys coming together and acknowledging uh, each other's efforts uh, across the season? Let's go back to Fred. He's got the Lakers skipper for a few thoughts post-match. Really, really close, hard contest. How's it going to play in? Uh, yeah, it was a close game and it was what we expected. It's a bit of a local derby. Um, not only being neighbours, but also the whakapapa connections between both of these clubs and um, just being next to each other. Well, after the first game, you've steadily improved through the competition. Um, not, not such a great, obviously, performance today, but how have you, how have you found it having come up into the Premiership? I think, you know, from our first game, it was a bit of a smack in the face, and from there we were able to build, and I think today was a reflection of our journey. Um, we weren't able to put 80 minutes on the park. There's uh, 40 minutes here, 40 minutes here, and I think, yeah, that's been the reflection of, of our journey, but proud of the boys and their effort over the last uh, five or six weeks. It's been really good to watch. Congratulations on a good campaign. Cheers, thank you. Yeah, he's a, he's a wonderful contributor too. And it's beautiful to see the Tamariki involved. I mean, it's a whānau game. That's why we love it and support it, as Sky Sport does as well. And I'm assuming you do also because you've linked in to watch today. Here's some results from the Premiership today. 
a, a close hard fought game between the Vulcans and the Stingrays 26 22. Waikato 30 22 winners here over the Lakers and earlier on in the Wahine uh, Premiership the Bulls 26 8 across Waikato and the Vulcans with a 14 4 win against the Stingrays. So here's the men's Premiership table and uh, Vulcans looking pretty good. Yeah, Vulcans go through unbeaten. Five from five, ten points. The second is Conti's Manuka. So those two will contest the final next week. We spoke about them. There's Akarana Falcons, Otago with their one win. And so have Bay of Plenty and Waikato with their two points. And in the women's division, of course, it's the Falcons who've gone through unbeaten with the game still in hand. Great performance by the Orcas as well. Waikato unable to come away with a victory, but a couple for the Canterbury squad as well. well. I hope you've enjoyed the afternoon's action. It's been a pleasure bringing you the pictures. And I'd like to acknowledge our crew from WSL who have been uh, with us today to bring you all of the action here from a double header uh, from League Park, Rugby League Park, the home of the Ngaru Awakia Panthers. And it's been a pleasure to be part of the broadcast team once again. On behalf of our directors, producers, and of course, camera staff from me, Dale, and of course, Willie Poaching, we wish you well and say farewell to you from the home of the Ngarua Wahia Panthers. Thank you for supporting local rugby league right here in the home of League and NZ.